Hello there my friends, nice to see you back on this channel because today we'll be talking about the $120 gaming beast with a huge downside. Yes, I'll be taking a look at the AMD Ryzen 3 3300X CPU that has been released recently. It comes with 4 cores with SMT, therefore 8 threads. The pricing as set is at about 120 US dollars right now, but it seems to go up and down depending on the availability. And now just in case you're confused about the whole naming scheme, long story short, both the Ryzen 3 3300X and 3100 are based on Zen 2, not Zen Plus as seen with those Ryzen 3. 3200G and Ryzen 5 3400G APUs featuring integrated graphics. So the 3000 series doesn't necessarily equal 3000 series if you know what I mean. Anyway, I'll put the 3300X to the test today. How good is it really for gaming? Could you save some money that way? And what should you look out for before buying such a CPU? As said before, unfortunately there's a huge downside to it. Shortly after this review, I'll soon upload another one of the smaller brother the Ryzen 3 3100, which happens to be even cheaper. Today it's all about the 3300X though. Included is the usual stuff with AMD processors, the pretty much smallest possible stock cooler, namely the Wraith Stealth. Besides using an AIO liquid cooler to cool the CPU, I'll also be doing some testing with the Wraith Stealth. Now before we move on, I'd like to give a quick shout out to the PC hardware shop named Equipper. Thanks goes out to them for getting me these Ryzen 3 processors as quickly as possible at the right prices. And since someone surely will be asking, no I'm not being paid for the shout out, just to set the record straight. For today's test run I am once again going to use my trusty ASRock X570 Tai Chi motherboard. For a realistic Ryzen 3 setup it sure is overkill but we don't have to wait all that long from now on until the B550 chipset finally sees the light of day, meaning we will get cheaper, more affordable motherboards for the current Ryzen 3000 CPUs. Now in order things can properly be compared with each other, I'll primarily use the same Deepcool Castle 240EX AIO liquid cooler for all my testing. The graphics card as always being the Nvidia RTX 2080 Ti. Obviously it's highly unlikely someone paying $120 for a CPU is going for a rather pricey CPU cooler, meaning it's more likely the included AMD Wraith Stealth will be used to take care of cooling in most setups of this type. Which is why I'll do a bit of testing with this stock cooler too, especially to determine the difference in clock speeds when using different cooling. Before we get to that however, I'd quickly like to tell you about the differences between today's Ryzen 3 3300X and the cheaper 3100. On paper the differences admittedly appear to be rather small, just the clock speeds stand out. Both come with 4 cores and 8 threads, but there's a huge difference in the CCX layout. While the 3300X features 4 cores per CCX or core complex, the 3100 on the other hand comes with just 2 cores per CCX. This means the 3100 unlike the 3300X doesn't work with a single complex but 2 to achieve those 4 cores. Generally speaking, the lower the number of those core complexes, the faster the communication between those cores due to lower latencies. This results in better performance at the end of the day. So since the 3100 utilizes two CCXs, in theory it should be slower than a 3300X with a single CCX layout. In the upcoming video I'll take a closer look at the 3100, then we'll see whether or not there really are noticeable performance drawbacks. Now here are the boost clocks with different cooling solutions. On the left the CPU is being cooled by a well performing AIO liquid cooler, on the right the stock cooler Wraith Stealth. With all 4 cores at full load, the CPU with the liquid cooler does in fact clock a whopping 150 to 175 MHz higher than with the stock cooler. The single core boost on the other hand at 4.35 GHz remains identical with both coolers. In game in Shadow of the Tomb Raider, the 3300X clocks up to 4.275 GHz on average. When using the liquid cooler we are talking of 4.35 GHz. Also before doing any testing I wanted to evaluate whether or not I could do some overclocking later on by checking the CPU core voltage. 
since at stock settings the 3300X on average already runs at 1.37 volts with all four cores at full load, I decided I would not do any overclocking, since I personally don't like going over the 1.4 volt mark with 7 nanometer Ryzen CPUs. So there's only one thing left to do, it's time for the benchmark results. Enjoy! So one thing we can take away from this right away is that if you don't have to rely on integrated graphics, a Ryzen 3 3300X is significantly faster than a Ryzen 5 3400G despite also only coming with 4 cores and 8 threads. The 3400G is based on 12 nanometer Zen Plus though. The now lower performing 3400G interestingly does cost slightly more than the 3300X. But then again due to the integrated graphics unit it's safe to assume we are talking of different use cases here. Priced similarly at the time of this video, at least over here in Europe, is the Ryzen 5 2600 sporting 6 cores and 12 threads. So I've purposely included the 2600 in my charts since it happens to be a very popular CPU. The advantage here are the 6 cores as opposed to just 4 on the 3300X. This could make the 2600 slightly more future proof if you will, albeit we should be using the word future proof with caution. But in terms of raw single core performance, the 3300X really manages to impress. It performs so well that in many game titles you can easily keep up with the Ryzen 5 3600. Even those 1% lows the minimums are looking great in most cases. So to be exact, in games that I have tested with, in terms of FPS, the 3300X apparently does perform a lot better than the Ryzen 5 2600 most of the time. When thinking about the number of cores both CPUs come with, it's mind-boggling what AMD is offering us for roughly $120 these days. But before jumping to the wrong conclusions, let me tell you it's not that simple in 2020 anymore. A quad-core, even if it sports 8 threads, isn't completely up to date anymore. In 2017 something like that was the best of the best in the mainstream lineup, but times have changed drastically since AMD has entered the CPU market with Ryzen. Especially since next-gen consoles are around the corner, we are slowly heading to 8 cores, even for gaming. So it's a perfectly reasonable question to ask how long you could get a pleasant experience out of a quad-core until you start running into issues. In this very moment, in the majority of use cases, especially in games, 4 cores are still doing fine, but I personally think it's just a matter of time until quad cores meet the same fate dual cores did. So you've probably noticed by now, no one will be able to tell for sure what the future holds. Neither can I. 
which is why I'm hesitating a little bit with making a recommendation for such a CPU. If you are aware of the risk you're running into with the AMD Ryzen 3 3300X becoming obsolete anytime, at least for now, in this very moment, for the price, we sure can call this a serious gaming beast for those on a budget. But whether or not it really is worth it picking up, at the end of the day, unfortunately, is a decision you have to make on your own. Hopefully my video could help make the choice a bit easier for you. With that being said, thanks for watching. Next up is the Ryzen 3 3100.